Hey everybody, it's Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle, Rock and Roll City, your rock and roll journalist here, to talk to you a little bit about something maybe you've heard about, which is this movement in Washington State and other states to vote uncommitted during the Democratic primaries. Now, why are people doing that? Let me explain. So let me read you a recent Associated Press article, Lansing, Michigan, a protest uncommitted vote in Michigan that secured two delegates in the state's Democratic primary on Tuesday was meant as a warning to President Joe Biden's re-election over his support for Israel's war against Hamas in Gaza. But eight months from Election Day, his campaign insists it's nothing to panic about. Well, it may be nothing to panic about, Joe, because people think that uh, most Democrats are going to vote for you rather than, you know, potential right-wing fanatic uh, fascist. <laughs> but uh, here's the truth. While Biden won the state of Michigan with more than 618,000 votes, with, of course, no challengers, really, really, uh, no serious challengers at this point, except we do have to remember that, you know, Marianne Williamson was running. Um, there's also Nikki Haley was running. Apparently she's... Um, suspended her campaign. There's Dr. Cornell West, someone who I've met multiple times and has been kind of a mentor in my life. He's also running and getting a lot of heat for it as well um, because people are, are accusing him of doing a Jill Stein and, you know, trying to throw the election the other way. Like uh, in the United States, of course, we have a two-party system. Um, many nations that are authoritarian have a one-party system where there's only one political party that's allowed to run candidates. In the United States, you have the Republicans and the Democrats both uh, who have switched, you know, allegiances over the years in, in different ways. Um, and we can talk about that at a future uh, MTC report. But right now, um, the Republicans are being led by Donald Trump, who's quite extreme to the right in terms of most political uh, structures in the Democratic West or, or in Democratic East or South or North, for that matter. Um, but Biden won Minis uh, Michigan the Democratic primary there, um, but 100,000 Michigan voters, uh, Democrats who are registered Democrats, voted uncommitted. And that was enough to pick up a pair of delegates. And the vote totals raised concerns for Democrats, according to the Associated Press, in a state Biden won by only 154,000 votes in 2020. Biden was beaten by the uncommitted vote in both Dearborn and Hamtramck, where Arab Americans make up close to half the population. Some local Democrats, such as United States Representative Rashiba Tlaib, the first Palestinian American woman to serve in Congress, had advocated for uncommitted votes to convey a message to Biden. Organizers of the uncommitted campaign, who had purposely set expectations low with the goal of at least 10,000 votes, celebrated Tuesday's results as a win. Biden still won 115 votes. Uh, 115 delegates, excuse me, on Tuesday, and is well on his way to clinching the nomination over marginal competition. But this is a big movement at the point at this point, and it's happening here in Washington State, where I live. There is a campaign in Washington State to get people to vote uncommitted as a protest against the United States' support of Israel and the war in Gaza, uh, which you know has involved incredible human rights abuses. Uh, on both sides, but especially on Israel at this point, by Israel at this point. So here we go. It may have been started by Hamas, but Israel is not letting its, the violence in. So here we go. The United States has been supporting Israel. Uh, Biden is alienating a lot of his own base in the Democratic Party, more liberal or uh, so-called left-leaning, left-leaning, if there is a left in the United States. Um, they are voting uncommitted. And in Washington State, we also have a campaign um, to make that happen. And I actually received uh, a text message from that campaign explaining why I should be doing this. But the Seattle Times also covered this story. Um, advocates for uncommitted vote in Washington's March 12th primary uh, pressed their case against Biden. Uh, so the Seattle Times is covering it up here in Washington State because we have a primary coming up and there's been a big campaign to try to get people to vote uncommitted. Now, this article in the Seattle Times is by our, our old friend Jim Bruner, but he's been writing for the Seattle Times for a long time. So he's covering the issue 
so check this out. I got uh, an email earlier today. I also got a text message. And let me read you what the text message says. If I can find it here on my phone. Ah, it's Joe from the Washington Uncommitted Campaign. We're asking Washington, we're asking Washington voters to vote for their uncommitted delegates option by March 12th in the Democratic presidential primary. All of the voting in Washington state uh, is mail-in voting. Uh, we are committed... Uh, we are voting for uncommitted delegates because we want to send a message to President Biden that we strongly reject funding and geno- funding war and genocide in Gaza. You can learn more at, and then they give the website, uncommittedwa.org. Will you vote for uncommitted delegates by, Mar- by Tuesday, March 12th? Okay, so it's out. Um, people are suggesting that uh, people like me, registered voters in Washington State, that we vote for uncommitted delegates instead of for Joe Biden. So, okay, here's uh, our underground rag here in Seattle, uh, you know, and I, I say that uh, with with uh, respect, lovingly. The Stranger, the Stranger Magazine, newspaper, whatever you want to call it, The Stranger endorses uncommitted delegates for the March 12th, 2024 presidential primary election. That was their headline. Get your ballots in by 8 p.m. March 12th. Stranger Election Control Board is is the name of this group. Um, and I won't repeat some of the things they said in this article because it uses words that uh, YouTube may not like me to use. Most Americans do not like the top choices in 2024 since they're the exact same choices we had in 2020. Now, don't get us wrong. We draw no equivalence between the openly fascistic Republican Party and the corporate-friendly but socially progressive Democratic Party. Well, that's for being very kind to the Democrats. We're just kind of wondering in a country... That was, by the way, that was my comment, not theirs. Uh, We're just kind of wondering... Now I'm back to the stranger, what they're saying. We're just kind of wondering... In a country of more than 330 million people, is the Democratic Party's answer to American fascism really a guy who bent over backwards to help Israel displace and annihilate Palestinians, flout international court of justice orders to prevent genocide, and continue apace with an illegal occupation? A guy who lurched hard to the right on immigration using Trump-era rules to limit asylum seekers and promising executive action to limit access to asylum even further? A guy who failed to fully cancel student debt who rejected court reform even after Dobbs? and multiple corruption scandals, and who let U.S. Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema take his job for the first two years. A guy who's older than Pop-Tarts and credit cards. A quick glance at the sane side of the ballot reveals that, yes, in fact, that guy, President Joe Biden, Joe R. Biden Jr., is the best that Democrats think they can do against former President Donald Trump this year. The other options just suck. Democratic Congressman Dean Phillips is a corporate gelato tycoon who's basically self-funding a campaign to increase his name recognition. Self-help author Marianne Williamson seems fun at parties, but she's already suspended her campaign. Writing in Ceasefire or Mickey Mouse simply amounts to throwing away your vote. According to state law, officials only have to tally write-in votes from candidates who filed timely declarations of a write-in candidacy and who also exceed the number of votes earned by the second-place candidate. It's very difficult for write-in candidates in Washington State. That's my comment. Uh, Back to the stranger. In other words, no one is going to see your write-in votes, folks. I hate to tell you. But, you know, realpolitik, as the French say, uh, politics sometimes isn't fun. But the Washington State Democratic Party did provide an option on our ballots that allows voters to express our disapproval of war crimes without throwing the country out with the bathwater. Uncommitted delegates. What are uncommitted delegates? Well, um, give us just two short paragraphs to explain. Number one, to win the Democratic Party's presidential nomination, a candidate must rack up 1,968 delegates at the Democratic National Convention in August. Washington State will contribute 92 delegates to that national tally, and the state party will award a certain share of those delegates to any candidate who wins more than 15% of the primary election vote. Uncommitted delegates simply do not have to cast a vote at the convention for a specific presidential candidate during the first round of balloting, the way delegates who pledge to vote for a certain candidate do. So, they can make noise in a very public way 
in Michigan, Congresswoman Rashiba Tlaib launched an informal campaign asking people to select uncommitted delegates to support the call for a ceasefire with about 200,000 registered votes, uh, voters who identify as Muslim in a state that Biden only won by a little more than 150,000 votes in 2020. He will be paying attention. Campaigns to vote uncommitted in other states, including right here in Washington, are revving up as we speak. But let's be real. Biden will likely win the nomination, and Washington's uncommitted delegates will serve only as a measure of our primary electorate's disapproval. But unlike a protest vote for Phillips or a throwaway write-in vote, voting for uncommitted delegates delivers a message to Biden in a language he can hear and understand. Uh, sure, we must admit that Biden has chalked up some impressive wins while working with a functionally divided government. He did sign the Inflation Reduction Act which included a historically large investment in combating climate change. He signed the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act, which included the largest investment in public transportation in history. He helped execute a soft landing after inflation shot up. And he signed a gun safety law that the NRA hated. And though he could be doing much more, he's the most pro-union president we've had in recent memory. But the potential benefits of pressuring Biden to do the right thing on the global stage outweigh the potential benefits of backing him outright in the primary. First of all, though presidents hold the most direct power over foreign policy decisions, they almost never have to heed public opinion on those issues. Fact that voters tend to focus on domestic concerns at the ballot box. Joining a movement to vote for uncommitted delegates to support a ceasefire gives us the rare opportunity to speak directly to the president on this issue. And the humanitarian disaster unfolding in Gaza is simply far too dire not to take advantage of that opportunity. And will winning Washington 80% to 20% instead of 90% to 10% scare him into doing the right thing on foreign policy and immigration? Probably not. But again, Trump and Biden are basically tied in the polls right now. In a race with margins that tight, Biden needs everyone to walk on do to knock on doors, to make phone calls, to email family members who live in swing states. And if he wants that level of support, especially from the youth and from other members of the winning Obama coalition, then he's going to have to respond to those demands in real material ways. And he should want that level of support since that work will do a lot more to help his electoral prospects than touting a Washington primary endorsement months ahead of the general election. Look, we know that Biden is the answer to the general election question because Trump would be worse in many, many ways. He's worse on Israel. He's literally planning militarized mass de deportations and detention camps at the border. And on social media, he repeatedly promises to destroy the radical left. With Republicans favored to take the Senate and maintain control of the House, he'll have all the power he needs to do whatever he wants. Using judicial review, the Supreme Court, perhaps the most minoritarian institution in government, holds an ultimate veto over the legislature and executive branches. Though the House of Representatives most directly represents the people, they face re-election every two years. That means they're not incentivized to solve problems. They're too busy running for re-election. But right now, it's the primary. And if we can't push the likely Democratic nominee to do what we want now, then when can we push him? So according to The Stranger magazine, you should vote uncommitted in Washington state. By the way, The Stranger Election Control Board is Hannah Craig, Vivian McCall, Charles Mwede, Ashley Nurbovig, uh, Megan Sealing, and uh, Rich Smith. So those are the folks at the editorial board on The Stranger magazine that are proposing to vote uncommitted in Washington state. So what are you going to do? I mean, I don't know. I'm in a rock band. I play music. I don't know. I'm in a rock band. I play music all day. And then I look at the elections and I think, God, can't we do much better than this? Really? I mean, seriously, where are all you good people out there that should be running for office when we have all these uh, <clears throat> less than completely competent people running things? I Or r at least running for office. I would... Uh, really recommend that people think about trying to pressure people in both parties to do the right thing. We are supposedly a democracy, and that means that each one of us should have some influence, whether it's through editorials, our vote, uh, protests, rallies, campaigns, initiatives in this state. We actually have an initiative process in Washington state. There should be ways of making things better. It comes down to that. It's very simple. And we, as citizens and residents of a democratic nation, need to pay attention to what's going on 
and try to make sure that our government does the right thing. So this is Mark Taylor Canfield. I'm here in Seattle. I'm not telling you how to vote or what to do, but I am giving you some information from other folks who seem to think that they know what's up. So um, thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't, go down there and um, if you haven't subscribed, go down and check it out at the, the link. Um, you'll get more videos of my journalism and my music. I'm uh, involved in the NPR, National Public Radio, Tiny Desk Concert Series uh, con contest this year. Again, with my song, uh, Didn't Want to Want You. Last year it was Battle in Seattle about the WTO protests that took here took place here uh, back around the year 1999-2000. But hey, here we go. This is Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle for the MPC Report. Thanks for listening and for watching. Peace out, y'all. Um, have a great day and tune in next time.